Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the internal rate of return and the target price upside from this opportunity. So we need to make a table here where we outline the market value. And we're going to start by getting the market capitalization of the business. Then we're going to add the debt, subtract the cash, and arrive at enterprise value. So we're doing the opposite of what we did in the table over here. We're working our way from market cap to enterprise value as opposed to the other way around. The market cap is going to be calculated from the assumptions we've laid out here based on the number of shares outstanding times the current share price that we observe in the market. Then what we're going to do is add the debt. We can find that there. Subtract the cash, which we find right there. And that gives us the end price value market cap plus debt minus cash. And we now have enterprise value. And we can also put here, just as a helpful reference, the equity value per share which is simply a link to this assumption here, $16. And then what we can now do is calculate the rate of return. And we can calculate the rate of return a few different ways. So we'll start by looking at the price. Then we'll put our target price, which is the intrinsic value per share that we believe the company is worth. And then we'll have our target price upside. And finally, we'll have the internal rate of return. So we've got a couple of different return metrics that we can look at here. The current price, once again, for ease of reference, I'm going to link here. The target price, as I mentioned, is the intrinsic value per share we believe the company is worth. So our target price upside is simply the target price divided by the current price minus 1, and that's 121%. But let's see what that is on a time-weighted basis if we use the internal rate of return. So to calculate the internal rate of return, there's one last thing we need to do here. If I scroll up, you'll see that this is the entry assumption for the analysis. So what's happening here is I assume that we acquire this business at the current enterprise value. Now you can debate what the appropriate assumption is for being able to acquire the business, but at this point we're showing how this flows through the model if we take the current enterprise value and use that as the acquisition cost of the business. So what we can then do is go over here and we can use the formula X IRR where we're going to take these cash flows here and we're going to match them up to the dates that we have at the top here. And we're going to close the bracket and what we get there is a 43% internal rate of return. And the easiest way to think of this is if we were acquiring the business at the current market price without giving consideration to any premiums or any other factors, but simply taking the market price of either buying a share or buying a whole business. Given that the share price is $16 and given that we believe the intrinsic value is $35.40, we have a target price upside of 121% or an internal rate of return, which is a compounding return over time of 43%.